Hey, welcome to the show. I'm Paul Gustafson, and this is Healthy Hypnosis, the show that helps you to understand, to become enlightened about the serious-minded, healthy side of the field of hypnosis or hypnotherapy. Those two terms are interchangeable. You know, I don't have any guests today, and so I'm going to talk for 30 minutes. Um, and I thought it would be a good opportunity to uh, kind of review a little bit about what my background is, um, and I thought it would also be good to kind of do a quick review about what hypnosis is. Uh, we've had a lot of uh, guests on the show. We've had a lot of practitioners on the show. And I thought that uh, over, the, over the years, and I thought every once in a while, about every 20 or 30 episodes or so, I kind of do a ABCs of hypnosis and help, help you guys at home to really understand at least what my, my perspective is of hypnosis. And then I thought I'd, I'd kind of talk about stress. I, I see more stress clients than I think uh, any other clients um, that I see. People are, are so affected these days by the pace of life. Um, I thought I'd, I'd talk about stress. I'll talk about uh, how hypnosis can help uh, relieve it. Sound good? Um, you know, before I got into hypnosis, I've been in this field for 11 years. Uh, I used to work in manufacturing uh, for many years. I, so I tell people I had to explore uh, every... Uh, every dead end in the blue collar world before I uh, decided to go to school and uh, get an education. And uh, I got my, my RN in, in 1991. And uh, I worked at Mass General Hospital uh, for a number of years. And I worked at a, in a surgical thoracic unit. And uh, I, I used to see people come from all over the world to have parts of their anatomy surgically removed because of the, the rigors of smoking. And after I left Mass General, uh, I worked, my, my father-in-law passed away, and, and he had the support of hospice, and it was intriguing to me at the time. And I remember uh, thinking that I'd like to look into that, so I did. And I did it for uh, eight years, and I used to see a lot of people uh, who were transitioning into the afterlife because of the effects of smoking, certainly for other reasons as well, but uh, the point in me mentioning that is it's, it's extra nice that I'm now in the field of uh, clinical hypnotherapy and I'm able to help people to avoid those particular problems. Um, you know, at the end of my time in hospice, I was uh, burned out. I did it for eight years and uh, I was definitely ready for a change. And I remember uh, kind of abruptly uh, leaving hospice uh, with no real plan, not a real good strategy at the time, but I had to do what I needed to do. And I spent three months searching and not really sure what I was going to do. And my wife was uh, very patient and supportive, and I'll always appreciate that. Um, so but a few things I knew. I wanted to continue making important connections with people. I wanted to serve and help and support, which is what I've been doing in the healthcare field. But I wanted to be independent. I wanted to uh, work for myself and... Uh, I had actually had success with hypnosis back in college. I had had a big problem with public speaking. And uh, I needed help. I was in college and I had to make presentations. And if I wasn't going to do them, I wasn't going to graduate. So the pressure was on. And I actually found a hypnotist in Lexington. She's a great lady. And we did three sessions, I believe. And uh, at the time, I got my cassette of the sessions. And I remember I had about six weeks to prepare, and I would be listening to those hypnosis sessions uh, two or sometimes three times a day, certainly leading up a week or so before. I was so uh, dedicated to uh, creating relief. And, uh, well, it was immensely successful. Um, I was just blown away at, at how easy it was to get up and do the presentation. So that was kind of in the back of my mind. And uh, so it all came down to one phone call. I remember seeing the, an ad in uh, the local newspaper it was a woman who, who was advertising how to get your Reiki practice up and running. Now, I'm not sure why I was so interested in this ad because I didn't have a Reiki practice. At the time, I really didn't know much of what Reiki was, but for some reason I felt compelled to call. And uh, she was very nice. Uh, she was in Arlington, and she spent some time with me, and we talked about all sorts of options. And uh, the subject of holistic modalities came up because that's the field she was in. And then the subject of hypnosis came up, and I, I recounted my experience with that technique. And uh, so she mentioned a couple of places that trained locally, 
One of them was uh, uh, Winchester Hospital. Uh, Ted Benton, who has been on this show before, uh, teaches hypnosis classes over at Winchester Hospital and um, also uh, with the Wakefield Hypnotherapy Training Company right over in Wakefield, Mass. Uh, Julie Griffin uh, is the person I ultimately took from. So I got certified in hypnosis, in basic hypnosis, in advanced clinical hypnosis, uh, metaphysical hypnosis, which is like the spiritual side of the field. Um, I got certified in regression therapy, helping people to go back uh, to times earlier in their current life or based on their values system uh, back into experiences in prior lives. And I also became certified in uh, IBS hypnosis, helping people to relieve symptoms of irritable bowel syndrome. And uh, you, it's interesting to know that the reason I chose that as a, a specialty field is because of the mountain of research that's out there. It's been researched probably more for IBS, it seems, than any other application. And the, the results were just so profoundly uh, positive that I thought it would be a good specialty to get into, and it's been great. So I was off and running in uh, 2001. I uh, got a quick start. I was writing. I was writing articles. I was researching. And I got a couple articles, more than a couple, published in uh, some local uh, nursing magazines. And then uh, I was sending out these very crude brochures at the time. I remember sending them out to all the radio stations. And I got home one day, and my, uh, my voicemail light was flashing. And I checked out to see what the message was. And it was from uh, Paul Sullivan, who was a talk show host uh, on WBZ Radio at the time. Uh, he got the brochure, fascinated about hypnosis, decided to have me on. So I uh, and I really didn't have, I really didn't have uh, the right to be going on a major radio station and talk about hypnosis with my limited knowledge at the time. But it worked, and uh, he had me back, you know, a half a dozen times. And from that, I sent a copy to uh, of that appearance to. Channel 5, uh, Channel 5's Chronicle, and uh, they call. So, geez, you know, things were just happening. And uh, so uh, they did a show on hypnosis, and uh, Mary Richardson was in my office, and we had one of my past clients talking about her experience and how it went. And uh, so the business got rolling very, very quickly. And uh, from there, I was uh, fortunate enough to contribute to a couple of national publications uh, Chris Prentice is the uh, the owner of Passages Rehab uh, Rehabilitation, Substance Abuse Rehabilitation Center out in Malibu, California. And he found me through the Internet and he wanted to know if I wanted to contribute to his book on substance abuse. And I've been doing some work uh, with substance abuse clients in hypnosis. So that went great. And uh, then um, the woman, Roberta Thames is her name. She wrote The Complete Idiot's Guide to Hypnosis wanted me to contribute to that. So all of a sudden, I was getting uh, this exposure, and, and uh, things were just uh, really starting to develop. So my office is in Burlington. Uh, I get referrals mostly from physicians, nurse practitioners, um, psychologists, chiropractors, pediatricians. I do a lot of pedi pediatric hypnosis, um, other holistic practitioners, um, I get word of, of, of mouth referrals, clients referring friends and family, and uh, I get a lot of uh, calls from this television show. Uh, people are searching, people are looking for solutions, and thankfully uh, the, the process, the technique of hypnosis is really um, entering into the mainstream more than it ever has before. Uh, you, you see it, um, it's out there, it's breaking through. and. Uh, this show has been going for uh, five years. We started this in 2006. Uh, just a quick word on, on this program. It started out as a Burlington-only program. And uh, I came on, I was a guest on um, Irene Duraco's program. Uh, she, she said at the end of one of her shows, if you have something interesting to say and you want to come on the show, give me a call. So I did, and that seed was planted the whole idea of the TV thing seemed like a good fit, and I was very comfortable. So uh, a couple of years later, I decided to start my own program, playing only in Burlington. My clients uh, in my office, I'd often show them video clips of the show so that they could uh, get a better feel for what hypnosis was. And uh, they all expressed an interest, or many of them did anyway, of having it 
played in their town. So that process of getting the paperwork signed and uh, them as a sponsor for the show. So now I'm mailing out uh, 45 episodes to, to 45 stations every time I do a show. So, and when I'm in the studio, I'll do two shows back to back. So that's 90 DVDs that go out in the mail, and uh, it's really great. It's played in 45 uh, towns, um, and if you've been watching the show, you know that we have uh, demonstrations. We have other uh, hypnotherapists who come on the show to talk about their expertise and their practices. I have referring physicians come on the show, and I of oftentimes have uh, past clients uh, come on the show to share their uh, their experience. Uh, so that's enough about me. Um, I want to talk real quickly about the history of hypnosis. Um, it's got a great history. It's been riding the coattails of American history. And real quickly, we've all heard the term to become mesmerized, right? Let me take a sip of water here. To become mesmerized, to enter into that trance-like state, well, that, that phrase was coined after Franz Anton Mesmer. German physician, died in 1815. He lived from 1734 to 1815. He's like the grandfather of modern hypnosis. It was his technique at the time. It was before the word hypnosis existed. And his technique was called animal magnetism. He believed that by passing magnets over the exterior surface of the, the subject's uh, body is what put them into hypnotic trance. Um, it was a big deal at the time. Uh, Benjamin Franklin was part of this committee that was uh, assigned to investigate Mesmer and his technique. And the conclusion was they didn't know what it was, but they knew something special was happening. So it was in 1843 that the term hypnosis was chosen to, to name this technique. And that was, that was coined by a uh, Scottish surgeon named James Braid. And it's really an unfortunate choice of words because uh, hypnosis, hypnos, is the Greek god of sleep. And hypnosis really isn't sleep at all. Uh, hypnosis is a daydream, deep daydream. Uh, in, uh, in 1845, a, a surgeon from India, his name was James Estaley, he was the first person to have a documented case, uh, surgery, where hypnosis was used as the anesthetic. Uh, unfortunately, you know, it made a big splash. It was very, very big news at the time. The next year, ether was discovered, and hypnosis got kicked to the curb. One of the many times that hypnosis has been kicked to the curb. Um, to bring uh, hypnosis into the modern day, it was Milton Erickson. And we've, uh, I've shown some video about Milton in previous episodes. Um, he, he, li he died in 1980, lived from 1908 to 1980. He's the, the uh, psychologist who brought hypnosis into psychotherapy. He's the one that brought it into the office setting and started to use it as a, uh, a therapeutic tool. So he was instrumental in defining what it is I'm doing in my office every day now, so many years later. Um, and lastly, on the history, it was 1958, where the American Medical Association um, uh, embraced hypnosis as a a complementary modality. This was back during the Eisenhower administration. Um, so uh, it got a rough start, lots of exploitation, lots of manipulation, uh, portrayed very badly in movies. We've all seen it. Um, stage hypnosis, chicken clucking, uh, outdated religious beliefs. Uh, you know, there, there were, were many who believed that hypnosis was a process of relinquishing free will and relinquishing uh, free will to the, the hypnotist who would then have control of you. It was viewed as being demonic, which is just all ridiculous. Uh, and then hypnosis was kicked to the curb uh, because of medical advancements, like I mentioned with ether. Um, so it's, it's, it's really had a rough start, but thankfully it's really breaking out now. And it's, since I've been in the field now for 11 years, the, yeah, the proliferation of uh, uh, hypnosis-based websites is just blown through the roof. Um, you can hear, and I've heard many times, uh, advertisements on the radio, uh, on WBZ uh, and other stations um, for hypnosis, and it's out there mounting scientific research, and that's really, that there's been so much done, I'm going to get into that real briefly in a minute, 
um, that it's hard to ignore. Uh, that's what's helping it to break into the mainstream. And as I mentioned, uh, there's a Department of Hypnotherapy in Winchester Hospital, Ted Benton, uh, North Shore Medical Center in uh, Salem. Uh, my, my good friend Karen Pischke, who's a nurse as well as a hypnotherapist, and she's been on this show a couple of times. So we are finally breaking through. Um, research organizations, this, there are many. Just Here's a few. The American Society for Clinical Hypnosis, the American Psychological Association, the APA, tons of hypnosis research. The International Hypnosis Research Institute and the uh, International Journal of Clinical and Experimental Hypnosis. So hypnosis has been scientifically analyzed and dissected for decades, and, uh, which is really um, what I use to reach out to physicians, um, present them uh, information gathered by their peers, and uh, speak to them in a language they understand, which is uh, really the, the best and most productive way to help them understand. So let's talk briefly about what hypnosis isn't. Uh, hypnosis is not mind control. It's not the process of relinquishing control. It's actually the process of accessing inner resources and inner control and power that we didn't previously know we had. Uh, it's not a power trick. Uh, there are uh, some exploitations of hypnosis. Um, another thing that hypnosis isn't, it's not always a quick fix. I think that um, Part of the misconception is that the hypnotist will wave their magic wand and uh, poof, all the problems just instantly disappear. On occasion, that can be true, um, but it's not uh, always the case, and sometimes it's a process. Uh, keys to success with hypnosis. Uh, you need to be an open-minded, willing participant, able to follow simple instructions. You need to have a strong desire to create positive change in your life. I can help modify, enhance desire, but I can't certainly create it for someone. Uh, you have to allow your thoughts to, to freely drift. No focusing, no concentrating, no trying. Those are all conscious efforts. We want to go into that free-floating mindset. That's the subconscious, the home of the imagination. And then the other key to success is repeat, repeat, repeat. Clients go home with a recording of the sessions we do and they press play once a day, they go to that mental gym. It's like training your brain to embrace a new path. You've repeated the problem patterns to the extent that you want to come for help, so the process of ensuring and creating the foundation that supports lasting success requires some repetition. And uh, it's a tough assignment. You need to put your feet up, close your eyes, and uh, euphorically relax on a regular basis. My clients uh, often are quite eager to take their recording home. Uh, I also email MP3 files as well. Uh, they're often quite eager to get home and, and repeat the process. Just a quick, um, you know, I, I specialize in many things. I mentioned IBS and certainly stress, and we're going to get into that now. Um, confidence, blood pressure, smoking, flying, speaking. I help people with pain. I help people with warts, with words. Hypnosis, we can uh, redirect circulation in the body so that the area of the warts don't receive the nutrition, the nutrients and the oxygen flow um, that they normally would, which helps the warts to dry up and disappear. It's amazing. Using hypnosis for nail biting, certainly for weight loss. Uh, I mentioned substance abuse. I see a lot of clients for uh, drinking and, uh, and other types of drugs. And the great thing with hypnosis for that is that we can stimulate the flow of endorphins with hypnosis. I can help clients to create a natural, healthy high. No side effects, no prescriptions, and they learn to do it on their own. So it's just a wonderful replacement for whatever it was they were uh, having a problem with. And I also uh, see clients uh, to help them prepare for surgery, training the mind to become relaxed, confident, and focused. Going into anesthesia means they come out of anesthesia relaxed, focused, and confident. And I also put people, a lot of people to sleep every night. Hypnosis is wonderful for insomnia. So, the subject of stress. Stress isn't a thing. It's not an experience. It's not another person. It's not a situation. Stress is a perception. Stress is a value. Stress is a belief. It's how you perceive something. It's very subjective. 
we could have three people all viewing one particular situation. One could be respond with extreme stress and anxiety. The other one can just be moderately annoyed, and the third person can look at it and wonder what the big deal is. So it's not that, it's us. It's how we frame, how we view the situation, and more importantly, how we choose to respond to it. Uh, and you know what? Over time, and I see this so often with the clients, stress begins to define, define the individual. And, and as we deal with it uh, longer and longer, stress can uh, create symptoms of depression. Stress can certainly affect us physically with pain, with ulcers, um, and, and we deal with it long enough. We just lose the wherewithal to endure it physically, so it begins to affect us globally, emotionally, and physically. Uh, stress is a global epidemic. Seventy-five percent uh, say that work is very stressful. The United States spends $300 billion a year in sick calls, low productivity, employee turnover, workman's comp, and medical insurance. A huge, huge cost. Uh, stress is one of the biggest challenges in the 21st century, uh, along with the economy, and I think the two go hand in hand. So let's talk about some solutions to stress. Uh, the physical solution, exercise. And I've seen so many clients who are using extreme exercise to manage their stress. Exercise is great. Exercise stimulates endorphins too. Everybody feels more relaxed, calm uh, after, after they exercise. Um, it's temporary. It feels good. Massage, therapeutic massage. It feels great when you're on the table. Again, endorphins are uh, stimulated with massage. Once you're off the table, once you're through exercising, there'll be an afterglow, maybe a couple hours, where everything is fine, but then you're going to go back into your world. The root of the pattern still exists. When you're only treating how you feel, that's just treating the symptoms. Uh, the meditation solution. Meditation creates the same type of bliss that hypnosis creates. But what's the difference? The difference between the two is meditation doesn't include the problem focused strategies that hypnosis has. I call hypnosis goal oriented meditation. We go to that same peaceful stillness, but when we get there, we're, we're kicking butt. We got crap to get rid of, we have unwanted problems unhealthy problems, patterns to remove, to delete, to dissect and dispose of. And with hypnosis, we're able to do that really productively in many different ways. And one of the techniques is called uh, encapsulation. We're able to imagine things like imaginary domes. An imaginary dome can be lowered over a period of your past, a uh, stressful experience from the past, encapsulate it so it no longer affects you uh, today. And there's uh, release therapies. We're able to release and let go of, to become free of a lot of these burdens in many different ways and techniques. And it's, uh, it's wonderfully effective. But meditation doesn't have the therapeutic, uh, the problem-focused um, technique that hypnosis offers. So the hypnosis solution. Let's talk about this briefly. Hypnosis, and this is important, Hypnosis gives us access to the hard drive, right? Habits, patterns, values, and beliefs. Anything that's repeated, if it's repeated frequently enough, it's rooted in the hard drive. A smoker intellectually knows it's going to kill them. But every time they do this, the root of that pattern in the subconscious gets longer and stronger. You get a big, thick, healthy root. The conscious mind just doesn't have the power, the willpower, to... Uh, to establish that change, to establish the freedom. Uh, hypnosis unplugs those unwanted, unhealthy, unproductive values, patterns of belief. It's the only point of source treatment. We go where the problems are. Uh, and we're able to actually download, in a sense, uh, this new operating system that supports what you want. Uh, as I said, hypnosis can encapsulate uh, past unpleasant memories and episodes from the past. Uh, you create distance, and I ask every client at the end of their first session, do you feel as though you created any separation between where you are at the conclusion of the session and where you were before it started? 
when you walk through the door for the first time, you're carrying the weight, the burden of the problem. At the conclusion of the first session, every single client I see feels that disconnect. And it's palpable. And when I ask them that, they usually pause, and it's like they're looking around the room, and then they typically smile, and they realize that, that is now, they are now free of it. And then I'll ask them if that, and I refer to it as the crap. I say, is that crap anywhere in the room? And 75, 80% or something like that, three quarters of them say no. It's nowhere to be seen. So that separation, that disconnect happens on the first visit. And every time they press play, every time they have another hypnosis experience supporting that goal, the problems, the worries, the concerns, whatever that problem was, drifts further away. And that distance continues to grow. And it's that repetition that establishes the uh, foundation that supports what you want. It develops the freedom that you can trust. And repetition is really the, the only way to do that. Uh, hypnosis optimizes that calm, confident thought process. I tell uh, clients that uh, if you relax so deeply, so profoundly and peacefully on a regular basis, what could possibly come from such a practice? you think more clearly. They, if I was to ask to pick one word that describes this whole process, mindfulness. You start thinking of everything more carefully. You're much more aware of what's important to you. You're much more aware of the results of your actions. It's like going from playing checkers to three-dimensional chess. You begin to anticipate situations, problems. I say to all of my clients, you know, in life we follow the path of our most dominant thoughts. And this process helps you to choose your thoughts and reshape your world. And you get to do it in a powerful way. Um, you can visit the website, burlingtonhypnosis.com. Uh, lots of information there. Uh, you can shoot me an email. If you have any questions, I get lots and lots of emails. I'm happy to, to answer questions. You can come in and have a free consult. Um, uh, uh, you can uh, go to the website and check out uh, uh, my book, Healthy Hypnosis, The Simple Truth and Practical Use, that it goes into more detail of all this information that I've been covering for you. And uh, check out Hypnosis. You will not be disappointed. Uh, I'm Paul Gustafson. This has been Healthy Hypnosis. I really appreciate you tuning in. And keep us in mind down the road because we've got some great episodes coming up. We'll see you next time.